The year is 1536. Agali Ibrahim Pasha had just finished dining with Sultan Suleiman. Unaware of the silent killers lurking in the dark, they pounced on him and choked him to death after a fierce struggle. Ibrahim Pasha was more than a Grand Vizier to the Sultan. He was his childhood friend, his confidant, his partner in power. Why did the Sultan order the death of his most loyal companion? Ibrahim was born to Orthodox Christian parents in Parga, Greece, then part of the Republic of Venice. His father was a fisherman. Ibrahim was recruited in his young age through Devshirma method. This method was the Ottoman practice of forcibly recruiting soldiers and bureaucrats from among the children of their Balkan Christian subjects and converting them to Islam. The Devshirma produced many of the Ottoman Empire's provincial governors, military commanders, and even grand viziers. Ibrahim was relocated to Istanbul. He was given a formal education and trained in science, warfare, and bureaucratic administration. He was one of the most talented and was taken into Suleiman's service in Manisa. From then on, Agali became his close friend and advisor. Mahidevran was listed among the 17 women of the harem of Suleiman while he was the governor. She gave birth to Suleiman's first and her only child, Mustafa, who was born in 1515 while they were in Manisa. As Suleiman's close friend, Ibrahim also spent a lot of time with Mustafa in Manisa. When his father died in 1520, Suleiman moved to Istanbul, the capital of the Ottoman Empire, along with his family and Ibrahim to ascend the throne. Suleiman kept his father's old and wise Grand Vizier in his position. He was generally described as a good statesman and displayed military skills. Suleiman appointed his friend Ibrahim first to the position of head of the courtiers and then chief of the falconry. In Istanbul, Suleiman's mother selected a beautiful slave called Roxolana as a gift for her son. Her joyful spirit and playful temperament earned her a new name, Hurim, from Persian, which means the cheerful one. In the Istanbul harem, Hurim became a rival to Mahidevran, and her influence over the Sultan soon became legendary. Suleiman began a series of military conquests. He made preparations for the conquest of Belgrade from the Kingdom of Hungary. Its capture was vital in removing the Hungarians and Croats, who remained the only formidable force who could block further Ottoman gains in Europe. Suleiman and his Grand Vizier circled Belgrade, and after a series of heavy bombardments, the city fell in 1521. Ibrahim served as the harem's gatekeeper during the Belgrade campaign. He was the head of all servants who cared for the Sultan's family during his absence. The Sultan built a small palace for his friend Ibrahim, just next to Topkapi Palace. This enabled Ibrahim to increase his influence and power. Suleiman turned his attention to the eastern Mediterranean island of Rhodes, the home base of the Knights Hospitaller. Ibrahim accompanied the Sultan and his Grand Vizier in the army for this campaign. Following a five-month siege, Rhodes capitulated. Ahmed Pasha, the second Vizier, had a strong ambition to be the Grand Vizier. He made up charges of corruption against Piri Mehmed Pasha, the current Grand Vizier, and tried to sway Suleiman to sack him. He also used Mehmed Pasha's advanced age as a reason to replace him. He finally achieved his goal of removing him from his position. 
But Suleiman did not choose Ahmed Pasha as the new Grand Vizier. Instead, against all tradition, he picked Pargali Ibrahim Pasha, his close friend and advisor. Ahmed Pasha, furious with disappointment, offered the Sultan to make him the governor of Egypt, which got accepted by Suleiman. Ibrahim Pasha got married in May 1524 in his palace in a wedding that lasted for two weeks. The dignitaries of the army and the government, especially the Sultan, were invited to the wedding. There is no solid information on the identity of his bride. Latest researchers suggest she was not the sister of the Sultan as previously assumed, but Musina Hatun from a wealthy family. This marriage appears to have been politically motivated as a method of integrating Ibrahim, an outsider, into the Ottoman elite. When Ahmed Pasha arrived to Egypt, he declared himself the Sultan of Egypt, independent from the Ottoman Empire. He struck coins with his own face and name in order to legitimize his power and captured Cairo Citadel and the local Ottoman garrisons in January 1524. With Sultan's order, he was eventually captured and executed. Four months after his wedding, Ibrahim Pasha was sent by the Sultan to restore order to Egypt, which was in a confused situation and could not recover after the rebellion started by Ahmed Pasha. By land, Ibrahim Pasha traveled to Aleppo, stopping at many places along the way. He listened to the people's grievances and dealt with various problems such as abuse and bribery. He reached Egypt in four months. Ibrahim Pasha was a reformer who reshaped the administration and governance of Egypt, and his successful model was also applied to other provinces. He enacted a new law that improved the legal system. Moreover, he countered the Portuguese threat in Oman and the Indian Ocean, which endangered the Red Sea by creating the Egyptian captaincy in Suez. Ibrahim Pasha restored Egypt's loyalty to the Ottoman Empire with his many regulations. While Ibrahim Pasha stayed in Egypt, Suleiman moved to Edirne for the winter of 1525. He only attended the council twice a week and spent most of his time hunting. The Janissaries in Constantinople grew restless with this lack of action. It had been more than two years since they returned from the Rhodes expedition. Without a war, they could not loot and enrich themselves. When Suleiman came back from Edirne to Constantinople, he did not go to the palace, but stayed in another mansion. This made the Janissaries' discontent turn into a full-blown rebellion. Suleiman moved back to palace, and the rebellion was suppressed by distributing gold. The head of the Janissaries was executed. Suleiman sent a messenger to Ibrahim asking his immediate return to capital. Hungary, which was growing closer to the Habsburgs, posed a threat to the Ottoman Empire and failed to reach a peaceful settlement with them. Suleiman decided to launch a campaign against Hungary. Ibrahim Pasha, who had gained more influence over the Sultan with his deeds in Egypt, was appointed as the leader of this campaign. In 1526, Suleiman launched a large invasion force of about 100,000 men, including infantry, cavalry, artillery and engineers. They crossed the Drava River and encountered the Hungarian army. The battle lasted for about two hours during which the Hungarians suffered heavy casualties and were surrounded by the Ottomans. King of Hungary died while trying to escape. Three days later, Ottoman army entered Buda. Suleiman praised his Grand Vizier for the great success of this expedition. After the Hungarian campaign, Anatolia was in turmoil with dangerous rebellions. Ibrahim Pasha showed his administrative skills there as well. He studied the reasons and actors of the rebellion carefully. Then, he won some of them over with various promises and easily broke up the rebels. 
with the expansion of the borders of the Ottoman Empire, Grand Vizier Ibrahim Pasha was given the rank of Commander-in-Chief and Minister of War by the Sultan at a council meeting in March 1527 in order to ensure control of military affairs. This was the most authority a vizier ever had, and it was announced to public with a big ceremony. Under Charles and his brother Ferdinand, the Habsburgs reoccupied Buda and took possession of Hungary. Reacting in 1529, Suleiman marched through the valley of the Danube and regained control of Buda. In the following autumn, his forces laid siege to Vienna. Bad weather and lack of siege equipment hampered the Ottoman army. They failed to capture the city after 17 days of siege. Their second attempt to conquer Vienna failed in 1532. In 1533, the Treaty of Constantinople was signed by Ferdinand in which he acknowledged Ottoman suzerainty, agreed to pay an annual tribute, and accepted the Ottoman Grand Vizier as his equal in rank. Suleiman's mother, Hafsa Sultan, died in March 1534. Hurem's influence in the palace increased, and she took over the ruling of the harem. Suleiman married Hurem in a magnificent formal ceremony. Never before had a former slave been elevated to the status of the Sultan's lawful spouse. Hurem gave birth to four healthy sons to secure the future of the Ottoman dynasty. This endangered Mustafa, the Sultan's first son and the most liked candidate for succession. After Suleiman stabilized his European frontiers, he now turned his attention to Persia, the base for the rival Shia Muslim faction. In 1533, Suleiman ordered his Pagali Ibrahim Pasha to lead an army into Eastern Asia Minor, where he retook several cities without resistance. Suleiman joined Ibrahim, and they made a push towards Persia, only to find the Shah sacrificing territory instead of facing a pitched battle. In 1535, Suleiman and Ibrahim made a grand entrance into Baghdad. Back in Istanbul, portraying himself as the real power behind the Ottoman Empire, Ibrahim used a variety of tactics to negotiate favorable deals with the leaders of the Catholic powers. The Venetian diplomats even referred to him as Ibrahim the Magnificent, a play on Suleiman's usual sobriquet. Ibrahim wanted Mustafa to be the next Sultan after Suleiman. Mustafa was the Sultan's first son and very popular among the people. Ibrahim had known him since he was a child. Hurem was very worried about this. It was the custom that a new sultan would kill all his brothers to avoid any conflict over the throne. Hurem wanted to keep her sons alive and also make them the rulers of the empire. Ibrahim made a historic deal with Francis in 1535 that gave France better trading rights in the Ottoman Empire if they helped fight the Habsburgs. This deal would lead to joint naval actions by the French and the Ottomans, including the Ottoman fleet staying in southern France during the winter. He was called to the palace on March 5, 1536, to talk about the issue. After he had dinner with the Sultan, he went to bed. Upon arrival to his room, he was seized and killed. Suleiman allowed Hurem to remain with him at court for the rest of her life, breaking all tradition. Hurem became the chief political advisor to her husband, the Sultan, 